So the first step you're gonna to wanna to do is schedule an appointment. It will prick my finger. One pint out of 14. The body is a complex mechanism. Too much of anything, too much copper, too much zinc, they can have downsides. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get blood. I'm gonna walk you through the process and we're gonna talk about the benefits, the pros, the cons, and why in particular, for example, on a carnivore diet, you might wanna do it, especially if you're a male. We've arrived at the facility. Uh, we are blood. This is the place that I made the reservation for. We just walked in, signed in, and we've got some forms to read here on the wall. A lot of recent activity, a lot of around sexual activity. So this is donor education information that they're going to want me to review. Right now what's going on is they're actually going through a questionnaire and they're gonna ask me about my recent sexual activity, the current information about who I am. Says, are you feeling healthy? Yeah. Are you currently taking any antibiotics? No. Are you currently taking other, any medication for infection? No. What usually happens at this point is they will ask me to sit in another consult room and then they will prick my finger, they will test my blood pressure. I think they do a rapid HIV test as well. So I'm in the chair and we're gonna stick here. Basically we find a vein and then we've got machines and we'll pull blood and we'll be good. <laughs> we got Santa in the video here. Yeah. Jim's giving me all these questions. So Jim, what is like a common thing that people ask you when they come in for blood donation? Like what are the most common questions you get? Pretty much what you've asked, you know, how much do we take? Uh, what are the different blood types used for? What about plasma, you know, different things like that, that you've been asking. Are those for testing right there that you're filling? Yeah, those are snacks. Are those little snacks? <laughs> this guy. Most of it's going down there though in the bag, right? Yeah. Why are you putting them in the tube then? Uh, we've run about 15, 16 different tests, including the, the COVID antibody test will be done with these. So will you, uh, you'll we'll see do. COVID antibodies in there, perhaps, and if you do, then, but you still will just, this blood's whole blood, so it's just gonna go for normal. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, 99% of the whole blood are spun down into a plasma and a packed red cell. So we'll have a plasma and that'll have antibodies in it. As far as the general donation time, it's what, like 15, 20 minutes usually where you're kind of hooked up if you have good circulation? No, no, no. This is, you're, you're going to do it in six, seven minutes probably. Oh, okay. Uh, you take about, uh, is it nine, 10 mil? What is it? It's like a tenth of your blood supply, a ninth, ninth. 9%, 8%, something like that? Well, we can't take more than 15 by, by rules. Okay. But you've got about two pints of blood for every 25 pounds you weigh. So I'm at 175, let's say, for simple math. Instead of uh, 16, you got uh, uh, 14. Okay. Got 14 pints, and we're taking one pint. One pint out of 14. Yeah. Only one point to pint today. Yeah. Is that the maximum you're allowed to take? Or well, if I'm a bigger guy, I've you could take more? No. The bag on the top has a preset amount of anticoagulant. If we take too much, then you could get clots in that bag. Oh, okay. So it has to match the anticoagulants that are already in it. Okay. And that's why, I, technically we actually take 500 milliliters. Okay. Now, two pints closer to 450. So we can't take more than 15%. And that 15 includes the 25 odd or so milliliters here and maybe eight or ten in the tubing that's left over. Mm. So they have to take all that in consideration, calculate it, and a donor who's 115 pounds would have enough blood to Yeah, I can safely say it's not not a scary process. No. Why you would want to do this, how this could help. You see, the body is a complex mechanism and the nutrients we need in our body as well as the, the things that we are essentially required to take in to stay optimized require a balance. Too much of anything, too much copper, too much zinc, too much vitamin C, they can have downsides. We have uh, 40, 50, sometimes even 60 people through here a day and it all, all day long. So I first learned about giving blood and the benefits of it probably about a year and a half ago. I had been on the carnivore diet for two years and this is something that not necessarily you have to be on the carnivore diet, you just might want to do this uh, for optimizing your health. There's actually a lot of writing out there with Mark's Daily Apple and some other things that can explain the benefits and the pros and cons to different types of things that accumulate in your body through relieving it through actually phlebotomy, therapeutic phlebotomy and blood gift. So the first step you're gonna wanna do in order to actually give blood is schedule an appointment to go have therapeutic phlebotomy or just phlebotomy if you're giving blood. And obviously the first thing you need to do is find out 
if there is a local blood donating place where you can actually give blood, you can set up an appointment and actually go through the process. So on my screen, I'm actually gonna pull up Google and I'm going to look for local places for phlebotomy for giving blood. So I'm just gonna type give blood. And I'm here in Austin, Texas. There's several places I've actually already done this. So I'm gonna to go to the place that I actually went to before, but you can go to the American Red Cross. They're often available. And then there's local organizations that support this in almost every major metro area. So in Austin here, we have a place called We Are Blood. So if I go there, there's gonna be different places. You can do donate blood, make an appointment. In my case, I'm going to make an appointment here. And I also have COVID plasma, so I could actually donate COVID plasma, which I'll talk to them when I go there. Right now, I'm just going to set up an appointment to do this. So click here to make an appointment online. And then what you wanna do is donation center. And the one that I would go to is the one here on North Lamar. Once I'm there, I'm going to um, find out, I'm gonna do whole blood. So you can talk, a lot of these, these donation centers are gonna to explain to you the exact type of donation you wanna do. Generally speaking, whole blood is probably the most standard. So I'm gonna select a date here and I'm just gonna see if they even let me do it on Thanksgiving. Um, there's nothing available on Thanksgiving, so we'll go back and we'll say Friday of this week because Fridays tend to be a little bit more chill for me. When you give blood, you're going to feel a little bit more lethargic. You're going to probably have about a 24 hour period where your energy levels are a little bit lower. Um, they're taking roughly one twelfth of your blood volume in your body, which takes about 24 to 36 hours to kind of refill through your body's creation of blood. There are certain other nutrients like your platelets and your hemoglobin that develop and build up over time afterwards in your red blood cells and white blood cells, but the blood plasma itself typically takes about 24 hours to replenish at that 1 12th, 1 10th of your overall volume. It's not going to make you necessarily totally tired, but it is going to basically be something where if you wanted to exercise that day, I would recommend exercising before. I remember giving blood and then going to the gym later that day, and I was definitely more lightheaded after certain lifts. and so. It's not recommended that you do anything super active, super strenuous when you give blood. One of the biggest reasons might be iron overload. And this is something that I have discovered in my own personal labs when I have done blood work and looked at everything. You might also have other toxicity or overload in your body and giving blood, especially as a man who doesn't menstruate regularly, is a way to sort of flush out and re, re kind of clean out the system. So. Giving blood can be a really powerful way to kind of refresh things. And I've noticed personally when I've been able to do that. How long have you been doing this for, Santa? 25 years. 25 years for bottoming. Yeah, I uh, started in uh, Maryland when uh, the in printing industry that I was in just started getting really weak. And since so I've done a lot of volunteer fire and EMS work, uh, I was able to get a job with the Red Cross there. And when I came home, I was having so much fun doing that. Came in here and got a job. 20 minutes for the actual draw. It's actually almost sunset. You can kind of see the sun going down here. The actual drawing took about 15 minutes probably. And then you want to wait 10, 15 minutes. Just give your body some time. Again, most people, especially someone my size, 160 pounds, the amount of blood they take, it's not gonna be substantial. It's less than 10% of your mass of blood and you're not gonna be that lightheaded. People that are under 115 pounds, they can't actually draw from. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of sort of stipulations and requirements that prevent people from getting their blood actually drawn because they don't want to take too much blood from someone. But overall, really good experience, very smooth. You have to answer some questions. You have to do some basic stuff. You're doing good for society. You're improving, potentially making some major improvements for health and you're giving back. So there's a lot to be had by this and to benefit a lot of people. Check it out. I hope you get a chance to do this and you can make it work for you because it certainly can be very helpful for a lot of people.